sixth grade, module six, lesson eight, problem set. Number one, the number of pockets in the clothes worn by seven students to school yesterday was 4134225. Today, those seven students each had three pockets in their clothes. Draw one dot plot of the number of pockets data for what students wore yesterday and another dot plot for what students wore today. Be sure to use the same scale. All right, so let's start with yesterday. So I'm gonna write yesterday at the top and draw a dot plot. So it ranges anywhere from, let's see, the lowest being one, the highest being five. So let's just go one to five. There aren't any halves or fourths, so I'm just going to break it up from one to five. One, two, three. All right, so we have, now I'm just going to plot all the data. We have one, one. I'll cross it out to make sure I don't miss anything. We have one, one. How many twos? Two twos. One, three. Two fours and a five. So then we need to draw a dot plot for what students wore today. So it says today those seven students each had three pockets. So then today they all had three. But it wants us to use the same scale for both. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four. So today there were seven students <clears throat> and they all had three pockets. So I'm just going to put seven dots on three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are our two dot plots and what they should look like. So we use the same scale. Um, let's just put our label on it. So my label, I'm going to say number of B, for each distribution, find the mean number of pockets worn by the seven students. Show the means on the dot plot using the balancing symbol. Okay, so the mean number of dot plot, dots would be on today. It's very simple because it's all three. So the mean is going to be three. That's where they are all balanced. So the mean is three for here, for today. So to find yesterday's mean, what we need to do is add up the total number of pockets and then divide by the number of students. We have ooh, one, one set of one pocket, plus two groups of two pockets, plus one student with three pockets, plus two students with four pockets, plus one student with five pockets. So let's add them all together. I'm going to group it because if I add it all together in my mind, I will probably mess up somewhere. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. Let's see, 3 plus 4 is 7. And 4 plus 5 is 9. Oh, I did two addition steps. So 5 plus 7 is 12 plus 9. So this would all add up to 21. And then we just need to divide by the number of students that I have, or how many numbers we have there, or seven. So 21 divided by seven is three. So the mean here is also three. So that mean is also three. You can say both means are three. For which distribution is the mean number of pockets a better indicator of what is typical? Explain. So if the mean is three and yesterday, you can see this distribution is pretty spread out. Like we've got anything from one to five and then the mean ends up being right here, three. Whereas today, everyone has three pockets. The mean is three. 
So the distribution for today is a lot smaller. There really is no distribution. It's they're all the same. So that is a better indicator of the number than the average number of pockets because everyone's is three. So let's say I'm going to write it over here. So it said there is much more variability in yesterday's data than today's. Okay, well, we can just say today's is none. There is no variability, everything's the same. So the mean of three pockets is a better indicator for, or more precise for today's distribution. All right, on to number two. The number of minutes rounded to the nearest minute it took to run a certain route was recorded for each of five students. The resulting data were 9, 10, 11, 14, and 60 min 16 minutes. The number of minutes rounded to the nearest minute it took the five students to run a different route was also recorded, resulting in the data 6, 8, 12, 15, and 19 minutes. Draw dot plots for the distribution of the times for the two routes. Be sure to use the same scale on both dot plots. Okay, so let's draw our dot plots. And this is number two. We have anything ranging from nine from the smallest, 16 is the largest for the first one, and for the second one, we have six as the smallest and 19. And it wants us to use the same scale for both dot plots, so we need to range anywhere from nine being the smallest to 19. So let's just go um, like nine to 20 or something like that. Maybe count by twos. So I'll go 8 to 28, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Remember, this is up to you. There is no right or wrong answer on your scale. So let's do it for the other one also. So 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and we need to give them titles and labels. So the label would be, maybe we could say, just call it time in minutes. And our title, let's start with yes. Let's see, number of minutes for the first route and the second route. So let's do the first route. We have a nine, maybe we'll put one in the middle there, nine. So this is the first route. Then there is a 10, 11, 14, and 16. So 10, 11, 14, and 16. So there's the first route. And then we have the second route. is 6, 8, 12, 15, and 19. So we have, oh, see, even I messed up. The smallest is actually six, so I'm just gonna extend our graphs and add a six. I'm gonna do the same over here. It's a good thing we can modify, so six. 
8, 12, 15, and 19. 6, 8, 12, 15, and that would be 19. Okay, so there are our dot points. Do the distributions have the same meaning? So let's figure that out. So here we have 9, 9 plus 10 plus 11 plus 14 plus 16. And then we're going to divide all that by 5. And I'll break out a calculator here. So we've got 9 plus 10 plus 11, 14, and 16. So all of that divided by 5 is 12. And then the next one, let's add all of those numbers together. We have 6, 8, 12, 15, and 19. That also adds up to 60. If we divide that by 5, we're going to get 12. That'll be 12. Okay. Six plus eight plus twelve plus fifteen plus nineteen. All that divided by five equals twelve. So the mean for both is twelve. They both have the same mean. Twelve minutes. So for B, it says. Do they have the same mean? Yes. So yes, they have the same mean. In which distribution is the mean a better indicator of the typical amount of time taken to run the route? So if we're looking at this, the mean is 12. So let's go ahead and create the mean there. There's the mean there. So which one is a better indicator or has the least amount of variability? So I would say that this one only ranges from about 9 and then only up to 16, whereas this one goes all the way down to 6, and then all the way up to 19. So everyone's more spread out on the second route compared to the first route. So the first route has, um, I would say it has a better indicator of the typical amount taken to run. So they're all closer to 12 minutes, whereas the second route, they're more spread out. That's all this is asking. So let's say the times for the second route are more varied. Then the first so the mean for the first is a better indicator I'd say more precise of a typical value all right and number three the following table shows the prices per gallon of gasoline and cents at five stations across town as recorded on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of a certain week. A, the mean price for per day for the five stations is the same for each of the three days. Without doing any calculations and simply looking at Friday's prices, what must the mean be? So no calculations, only looking at Friday's prices here. What 
would the mean price be? Okay, so we have a 350, a 350, a 360, a 370, and a 370. So the 360 is right in the middle of 350 and 370. So we have two of these, two of these. So to me, the mean looks like it's going to be 360 because it's centered on 360 cents. So I'll say Friday's prices. Are centered on three hundred sixty cents. I would say three sixty is in the middle of three fifty and three seventy. So 360 is the mean. And then B, for which daily distribution is the mean a better indicator of the typical price per gallon for the five stations? So which one has the least amount of variability? So this one has, let's start with Friday since we were already looking at it. I mean, it's got a pretty large variability of 20 cents. Um, which when you're talking price per gallon, that's, you know, that can be, it adds up if you get like 20 gallons. So let's look at Wednesday. So the lowest looks to be 357 and the highest, or no, sorry, the lowest is 354 here and the highest being 365. So that's a little bit of less variability. That's about 11. And then Monday, the lowest is 358, and the highest being 362. So that's only a variability of four cents. So it looks to me like Monday had the least um, variability and would be a better indicator for the typical price per gallon for the five stations, because they were all pretty close together. So let's say the mean for Monday is the best indicator of a typical price because there's little variability or we could say there's the least amount, the least amount of variability. And that is the end.